Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today's video, we're gonna talk all about the bar catering at your wedding, primarily having an open bar and essentially kind of an open bar 101 for you. So by definition, an open bar basically means that the hosts of the wedding, aka you guys, are paying for all the alcohol. There are no transactions that are happening at the bar. So everything that is provided as far as alcohol goes at your bar is free for all of your guests. Now, open bar doesn't necessarily mean full bar. So there is a, a distinction here. Um, alcohol is one of those things that can add up so, so quickly when it comes to your overall wedding expenses and uh, your vendors. This cost can increase rapidly. So there are a lot of ways that you can kind of have a modified open bar without it being a completely full bar. So a full bar basically means that you have essentially every type of liquor. Uh, there are obviously a lot of levels you can go with this as far as how many options you have per liquor type so several different types of vodka several different types of tequilas and so on and so forth but essentially an open bar means that you can make pretty much any drink that a customer is going to come up and ask for with the ingredients and the items that you have available so an open bar and a full bar are two different things open bar basically just means that you are paying for everything that is going to be provided at the bar now, like I said, this can add up so quickly. So there are some modified ways that you can have an open bar without it completely being a gigantic expense for your wedding. Now, when you have a full bar or an open bar, a lot of times couples choose to have it catered by a bartending service. So you're basically, and a lot of this might depend on, on the venue that you choose to and what their restrictions are, what their licensing is, what their permits are, and what they require as far as um, who is supplying the alcohol and the, uh, the serving the alcohol at your wedding. So so that is number one is you want to check with your venue on what their restrictions are and what they require in terms of having a licensed bartending catering service or if you are able to self-purchase alcohol and then hire bartenders or whatever route you want to go there. If you're having it catered by a bartending service, most will have packages that you choose from. And they start with a very base package, which is typically like beer and wine. And then you can go up to like lower level, level liquors and then a specialty package that has a little bit more specialty type liquors and more high end options. So usually there's, there's some varieties of packages you can choose from and then they kind of provide everything within that. So you don't have to make too many decisions as far as the specific type of liquor you wanna have, the specific drinks you wanna be able to have available and that kind of stuff that's where having a professional bartending service is going to come in handy if you're somebody that doesn't really know a whole lot about alcohol um, or you don't know what you want to have provided or what your guests are going to like having a package that's already kind of established from a bartending service is going to be really helpful for you here make sure too that when you are uh, kind of budgeting for an open bar you are factoring in other items such as the glassware where is that going to come from again if you are hiring a bartending service most of the time that will come from them whether they are renting it third party or have it directly available through them. Uh, that way they are bringing all the glassware and they're bringing it back with them at the end of the night too. And that's kind of something you can cut out um, third party middleman having to transport and clean and figure out how to get the glassware to and from your venue. Um, a labor is, is another cost to factor in when you're hiring a bartending service. Obviously the alcohol is going to be one cost, but you also have to pay for the individuals that are going to physically be there serving the alcohol, their labor costs. And then also tips. Um, a lot of times for bartenders, sometimes a little bit of gratuity is added into the overall bill, but most of the time you will be tipping on top of what the final bill is going to be per bartender. You can also choose to have a tip jar out for your bartenders so that your guests can tip their bartenders, they're not paying for their drinks. A lot of times guests will be uh, a lot more generous with their tipping. So let's talk about stocking your bar now and kind of what your options are and maybe some ways to save money. If you wanna have an open bar, you don't wanna have your guests pay for anything, but you don't wanna have a full service, full bar, and you don't want to be spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on alcohol. Essentially, the rule of thumb is the more options you have, the more money you're going to spend. So if you want to be able to have kind of a variety of liquor options for your guests so that they can have a variety of drinks readily available at their request, you're going to be spending more money. So essentially the least expensive way to have an open bar is to just have beer and wine. So you will have several different types of beers. Typically this will be like a domestic or a couple domestics and then some nice, nicer craft type beers um, and then a couple different types of wine. That's kind of your, your baseline for an open bar on how you're going to spend the least amount of money is beer and wine. 
This is also nice if you are not wanting to have a super late night, if you're not wanting to have a super rowdy crowd, not providing any type of liquor is going to help limit uh, kind of the capacity people are able to get a little bit crazy on the alcohol provided. So that's kind of your baseline. Um, you can step it up a notch if you want to and be able to provide a sparkling option. So whether that's like a sparkling rosé or champagne, if you want to do a champagne toast, a lot of couples will have beer and wine and champagne. Another option you can do is to have beer and wine and then a specialty cocktail or two. This is very, very common with a lot of my couples. Uh, that way you are providing a liquor option. You're not limiting, limiting it too much for your guests, but you're not having to provide multiple liquor liquor options and have all the mixers that come with all those liquor options. Um, having a, a signature cocktail is also a great way to kind of tie in another little personal uh, customized feature to your wedding. A lot of times couples will choose names for their signature cocktails that have to do with them as a couple or maybe they'll use their pets or some kind of personal touch to kind of tie in their overall wedding day, their theme, or kind of help tell the story of their, their love story by using um, a signature cocktail. So you can do one signature cocktail, a lot of couples will do two and do like two different types of liquors. So you'll have maybe a, a clear liquor and a brown liquor. So you'd have um, like a, a vodka signature cocktail and then maybe a whiskey, like an old fashioned signature cocktail. That way you have those options and then just beer and wine and that limits the amount of things that you have to have stocked at your bar. So it's kind of the next level up. Another option to do too, if you do want to have signature cocktails, but you're not wanting to have them throughout the entire night, because of course, if you are having a signature cocktail and you are providing liquor, you have to then estimate how many people are going to be um, consuming that liquor throughout the extent of your evening. And so of course that adds up when you're multiplying it for your guest count. If you were having a larger guest count, this can add up very quickly. So another option here is to only have signature cocktails available during your cocktail hour. That way they are still available. You have them there and they're free and guests can have them during the cocktail hour when everyone's mingling. And then once dinner starts, it goes back to beer and wine. Another option is you can have just kind of a prepaid amount of the signature cocktail. And then when that runs out, it's out. And then guests are limited to whatever else you have available at the bar. This way you can kind of budget how much you want to be spending at your bar. And then that way you don't run the risk of going over that budget. Um, that drink just no longer becomes available once you've reached that point. If you don't want to have a signature cocktail, you don't want to limit that for your guests, another route you can go is to have beer, wine, and then just one or two liquor options of each kind, like maybe a clear liquor and a brown liquor, or if you're tequila people, a tequila and a brown liquor, however you want to do that, just having the specific liquors available and then like two or three mixers that go with each of those liquor types. That way you're not limiting them to one type of drink that they have to stay with that entire evening, but you're still not having to stock a full bar. So if you are using a bartending service, some things to decide discuss with them to make sure that you are getting the most out of their service and that you know what to expect and ensure that you aren't missing any details when it comes to having your bar stocked and everything at your bar. Um, things to ask are, number one, is gratuity included? We talked about this a little bit before. Sometimes gratuity is included in the overall bill for bartenders, especially if it's uh, a bartender that is accompanied through your caterer if they're providing um, alcohol services as well. Um, but that's something you wanna make sure that you understand moving forward is, is gratuity already included or is that something you're going to add on at the end of the evening? A lot of times, even if gratuity is included, many couples will still choose to tip the bartenders an extra amount on top of that. So you just wanna make sure that you're factoring in gratuity into your overall bar budget. Um, is glassware included? You wanna make sure that you're talking through where the vessels and the, the glassware that your guests are going to be drinking from is coming from. Is this going to be disposable? Is this going to be nicer glassware? Are you going to have champagne flutes if you're having a champagne toast? Are those going to be on the table? Um, on the topic of champagne, if you plan to have a champagne toast, are the bartenders the ones that are going to come around to your tables and serve them? Or is that something you have to speak to your caterer about? You wanna make sure that you have the staff available to be able to serve champagne when you plan to have a champagne toast. This is something that kind of goes overlooked a lot of times when it comes to planning the details of the wedding and kind of setting up your, your champagne toast. You want to make sure that you have somebody that is going to be pouring that champagne. Um, also have the ice discussion. Is that something that they provide? Will they bring ice with them? Or is that something that you need to have provided at the venue? Or maybe your venue has an ice machine and that's not something you have to worry about. So make sure you're having the conversation on ice. Keep in mind that you will need both ice for going into the drinks for drinking ice and also ice to keep the drinks cold. So two separate types of ice. So you kind of need to overestimate the amount that you're going to need, especially if it's a hot summer day and you're having your wedding outdoors, you're going to need even more ice. So make sure you're having that discussion with whoever's providing your alcohol. Additionally, do they need anything for setup? A lot of times this will depend on the venue that you're at as well. Does your venue have a bar already that they can kind of just go in and stock 
what they need at this already made bar? Do you need to kind of makeshift a bar? Do they need you to provide tables? Do they need you to provide linens? Those types of things you need to make sure if they are bringing their own tabletop service if they have their own bins to display drinks or if that's something that you need to provide for them and then they will just stock those items. There can be a lot of decisions that need to be made surrounding the alcohol at your wedding and what type of bartending service you're going to have. A lot of this is going to be greatly determined by what your budget is for alcohol as this is something that can add up very very quickly. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice and we'll see you next week.